540. An existing circulating pump distributes cooling water at 60 degrees year-round. Currently, the pump runs continuously and delivers maximum rated flow. A load evaluation has determined that rated flow is not required all the time. Two designs are being considered to provide a variable flow system. One design is to add a variable frequency drive to the pump. The other is to add a throttling valve to the pump discharge. Known data is pump design conditions, 450 GPM at 40 feet ahead, brake horsepower 5.8, and efficiency 78.3%. New variable speed drive efficiency is 95%, and installed cost is $4,300. Pump efficiency at reduced choked flow efficiency is 69%, and the valve installed cost is $2,625. For purposes of evaluation, Ignore electrical demand charges. Assume the average flow rate annually is 67% of design. Electrical power costs are $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour. Based on pump curve data, using the throttling valve yields an operating head of 43 feet at the reduced flow condition. The simple payback in years of the variable speed drive versus the throttling valve is most nearly what? So we're being asked to compare two alternatives in terms of cost and they both have an upfront cost and they're going to have some operational cost and I think it's expected that the variable frequency drive is going to have greater annual savings because it has a greater upfront cost so if it doesn't then it'll never pay back and uh, none of the answer choices are that it won't pay back so we expect the VFD to be the better option in terms of annual savings but again how long will it take to pay back based on the fact that it costs more in the first place. So let's start with option one for the VFD. Since we know the flow rate design is 450 and it's going at full flow, we only need to run at 67% of that. And at full flow, the brake horsepower is 5.8. So we can use the affinity laws to find the new brake horsepower. And the power changes with the cube of the flow rate or the speed. So we can say BHP2, or the new BHP, as compared to BHP1, will be Q2 over Q1 cubed. So plugging in and solving for BHP2, we can take BHP1, 5.8, and the ratio of Q2 to Q1, we could figure out what the actual number is, and we might need to later, but we know it's 67%, so that ratio is just 0.67, and that's getting cubed. So the new horsepower is going to be 1.74, and that's still brake horsepower, so there still could be another loss in terms of uh, electrical efficiency with which the electrical energy in an AC motor is converted to actual brake horsepower at the shaft that turns the pump. We can probably neglect that for this problem and just take the BHP as the electrical power. We do need to account for the efficiency of the pump where that turning of a shaft, that brake horsepower, then becomes water horsepower or, or uh, hydraulic horsepower. So we will include that efficiency between the shaft and the water, but we'll neglect the efficiency between the windings of the motor and the shaft. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, there's a section that makes the distinction between those two efficiencies. Well, I guess in a sense, we're going to include some electrical efficiency in that we've been told the variable speed drive has a 5% loss. It's only 95% efficient. So we're still on the VFD option. Let's include that. So we have the 1.74 over 0.95 gives us 1.84 horsepower. And that's on average continuous which is quite a savings from the 5.8 where we started. So let's figure out what the operational cost of that will be for a year. We have the 1.84 horsepower times 0.746 kilowatts per horsepower times 8760 hours in a year. So now we're in kilowatt hours and then eight cents per kilowatt hour. So kilowatt hour gets rid of all these and we're just left with money, dollars. So that's 960 OPEX. And then the CAPEX we said was $4,300. So I'll just put that there so we have it all together. And that is the financial analysis for option one for the VFD. Now we're ready to look at option two, which is the throttling valve. And for this one, the volume is being reduced. So we are going to get 
some savings there in terms of the energy, but we're doing it by adding a restriction. So the pressure head that the pump has to pump against is the same or greater than it was before. So in some ways, these two things are competing. Of course, it's simpler and easier, which is why it has less upfront cost in the first place. And the way that we're gonna find out the power is not an affinity law because we're not ramping down the speed in order to save something on the power. It's basically changing the operational conditions because we're changing the amount of pressure that the pump has to pump against. It's like it's a different system. So we have to go back to the hydraulic horsepower equations and figure out the water horsepower as though it's a, it's a new scenario. So refer to table 18.5, hydraulic horsepower equations. And if you know any two, well not any two things, but you have to know either the head or the delta P and PSI. And with one of those, either the volume flow rate or the mass flow rate. And between those two things, you can find the water horsepower. So I'm gonna suggest we use the first formula on the top left corner of that table, which says that the water horsepower is the head given in feet times the volume flow rate given in GPM over 3960. And they've worked this out. As long as you put the inputs in the right units, it comes out in horsepower. So they told us that in the design conditions, it was 40 feet ahead. But based on pump curve data using the throttling valve yields an operating head of 43 feet. So it's more pressure that it has to pump against due to the throttling valve. It went from 40 to 43. So I'll put that here. But we do expect to have, I'm going to actually exclude the units because the units are already accommodated in this formula. But we do expect this to be a save. We expect to use less than 5.8. And where that savings actually comes from is the reduction in volume as we go from 450 to something that's 67% of that. And that 67% volume is true for both cases, whether it's using the VFD or using the throttling valve. So 67% of 450, which is about 300. And then that gets divided by 3960. And that gives us 3.27 horsepower, and that's the water horsepower. And that is lower than 5.8, so it is worth it. There are going to be savings here. Unfortunately, the efficiency also gets lower in this scenario. It was 78.3% efficient in the original design, but now with the reduced choke to low, it's only 69% efficient. So as we go from water horsepower to brake horsepower, we have to include that efficiency. So the brake horsepower equals the water horsepower divided by the mechanical efficiency of the pump. So that's 3.27 over 0.69, and that gives us 4.7 bhp. So again, as we went, as we came from the original design, the water horsepower went down. If that wasn't the case, then we wouldn't do the project because there wouldn't be savings. But unfortunately, the efficiency also went down, which means that the brake horsepower went up from what it would have been, but it's still less than 5.8. And that's the key. It's still worth it. It's just a matter of which option is more worth it. Okay, so now that we have our new BHP, again, we're neglecting electrical efficiency, so we're gonna assume that this is just the power that we need, and we can go through the same sort of formulation to find the OPEX as we did in option one. And I'll skip the units on this one because it's gonna be all the same parameters going in. We have 4.7 for the horsepower times 0.746 times 87.60 hours times 0 0.08 for cost per kilowatt hour, and that works out to 2481, that's the OPEX. And just for completeness, the cost was 2625 up front. Okay, so these were the results of our option one analysis, and these were the results of our option two analysis. And now let's find the difference between the two, starting with the upfront cost, we have 4,300 for option one minus 2,625. So 1,675, that's how much more option one costs than option two. But then on the OPEX side, we have a cost of 2,480 every year with the throttling valve, but only 960 if we do the VFD. So that's an annual savings of 1,520, where option two is more expensive than option one. So the payback period then 
is the amount of time that it takes to make up for the difference in the initial cost, the 16.75. So right after the initial cost, you're down 16.75 if you went with option one, but you're gonna save 15.20 just in the first year and every year thereafter. So it only takes 1.1 years to break even. And then after that, you're saving more and more. So the best choice is A.